the New England Convocation. We cry out for God to restore this building, this campus, and us as the Church of New England. It's time to restore New England. You know, if you want to get out of your seat or you just want to sit, uh, stay where you are, turn around, three, four people, you, if you want to hold hands, hold hands. If you're not, that's fine too. Whatever, you know, the space in the middle. Let's just relax now. Let's relax because this is one of the most important parts of what that we're going to be doing where we are now, you are the agents of change. You are the agents of uh, ushering in God's move uh, in, in, in our nation and in the world. So let's be a priestly congregation using the authority of Jesus that we have. You might take a quick second just to introduce yourself, but we're about business right now. Different people will lead us into different moments and topics that we are going to be praying for. All right? So the first uh, segment will be, very briefly, we want to pray, of course, for our nation and for the events that are awaiting us right now. And so I'm going to lead that prayer. Uh, and I want you to say amen and also utter your own prayers as I pray. And lift your voices, even right now. Pray for our nation. Pray for the electoral process. Pray for spiritual transformation for conversions and evangelism. Let your voices be heard. Use that authority. Use that authority. This may be the most important part of the entire gathering. The people of God doing their priestly calling of ex exalting the name of Christ and also asking for His power to be activated, for His will to come down on earth. Remember that the Lord has said that what we set loose on earth, He will set loose in heaven. What we bind here on earth, it, it's authority. It's godly power. So use that power. One of you or two of you or simultaneously all of you who are in a group, come on, use that authority. Pray, pray, pray right now. Pray for our nation. Pray for America. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we set loose revival. We bind the powers of hell. We bind uh, the strategies of the enemy. And we declare the power of God, the will of God being done on earth, unimpeded as in heaven. We pray for revival in America, Lord. We pray for the electrical, electoral process, Father. We pray that you will do something extraordinary in the next months and years. We declare that you will choose judges. You will choose representatives and, and senators. You will choose the, the heads of agencies. You will choose the next president and vice president. You will decide the processes that will affect our nation. We are here simply to say, God, let your will be done on this nation. Let America become all that it has been meant to become. Let the forces of the enemy be scattered. Let confusion reign in the hordes of hell. Father, let your people be revived. Let the voice of the church be heard nationally and internationally. Let prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists be raised with the great authority. Apostles, let them be raised right now in this nation for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Now, we will go into other, other prayers as well, and different people up here will lead us into different uh, prayers, okay? Different themes. Stay on those themes, and let's be really directed in our prayers. I will lead us in a prayer of repentance. You may want to kneel or stand and keep going. But before revival comes repentance, and before corporate repentance comes individual repentance. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me. 
I need you wash me. I need your touch to wash me. I need your Holy Spirit to wash me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Against thee and you only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. You desire truth in my inward parts, in the hidden part. Purge me with hyssop. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Create in me a clean heart, O God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hi, John Hamill with uh, Lamplighter Ministries in Washington, D.C. I am a New Englander now in Washington, D.C., leading prayer in D.C. And we just humble ourselves on this eve of Yom Kippur, God, the Day of Atonement, seeking your atonement for our national sins, God. Lord, our, our sins have been exposed. They're on public view. They're on view to the whole world, God. And all we can do is is cry out for mercy, God. Whether it is deceit and denial or whether it is abuse, even sexual abuse being conveyed even by our highest leaders. We ask your forgiveness, God. We are a Christian nation, Lord. Our nation was founded by covenant with you. And yet we have strayed. We cry out to you for mercy. We cry out to you for a new move of awakening. We cry out to you from this sacred hall where your anointing went forth for an anointing of holy conviction again to spread across our land. We cry out to you, Lord. Preserve us under the dream of your heart, God, that we may again be a city on a hill, a light to the nations. No king but Jesus. My name is Dick Kiernan. I'm the coordinator of the New Hampshire Alliance Prayer Movement. I'm, uh, I serve in the Alpha New England ministry. I'm from Manchester, New Hampshire, and I belong to St. Marie's Catholic Church. And hi, I'm, I'm Clinton Scroggins uh, from Austin, Texas. I went to school up here, uh, and I, I serve at Ignite Ivy America. We mobilize prayer, worship, and missions on college campuses. Um, across America and the Ivy League campuses. Our topic is we're praying for unity, John 17, unity. In 2012, the New Hampshire Night of Worship was held and there were 250 churches that came together. And I know that 42 of them were Catholic churches. So I'm praying for church unity. So Lord, we'd like to pray John 17. May they be brought to complete unity, to let the world know that you have sent me and have loved them. Lord, we desire to become united as one body of Christ. Your body is broken, Lord, but we desire for it to be healed, Lord, for us to be one body, one spirit, Lord. So, Lord, we are asking, Lord, that you would, uh, that they'll know we are Christians by our love for one another. So we pray for our love for each other, Lord, and a love for the world. And I pray, Lord, that we could be completely humble and gentle making every effort to keep unity in the spirit through the bond of peace. And I especially pray for our leaders to come together. Lord, bring together the leaders of your churches. May they be united together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for a spirit of unity all across our nation, north, south, east, and west that we be one as you and Jesus are one. Lord, we pray for a breaking down of, of racial, ethnic barriers all across our nation, a reconciliation within communities. Father, we pray for coming together of generations, uh, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, that we be one heartbeat, Lord, with your voice on the inside of us, Lord, um, that we would move empowered by your one spirit as one church, Lord, the many gifts, the diversity of the body, Body, the diversity of ministries, but one body in, in the name of Jesus, in one nation under God.
I'm Gabrielle Beam, pastoring in the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and a state organizer. Mike Thornton, I serve as a coordinator in Ignite Ministries in North Carolina. Amen. We have been asked to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Come Can on. you lift your hands up to God oh, Almighty and your hearts up to God out, Almighty? It and it says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will Let pour out my spirit on all come. flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Come. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall oh, see visions. Even on the male and the female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Can we come before God Almighty and ask the Holy Spirit, would you pray with us for two minutes would you pray with us and cry out he has been raining down under our tent we saw a vision and in that vision we saw a fire the fire of God just consuming us and consuming the body of Christ and then after we had been in repentance we saw a rain a holy rain come down and it was as if a whirlwind that was going around the fire only the water wasn't dousing the fire it was causing the fire to grow stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and in Zechariah 2 5 it says I will be a wall of fire around you and my glory will be in your midst so just cry out for two minutes just cry out yeah let the Holy yes. Spirit would rain down upon New England like never before oh God Lord, you showed us a vision coming up here, God, from the Carolinas, God, that a dam was all over New England. But you said, God, that the dam would break, that this weekend the dam would break and the waters would flood and the waters would come. God, we declare that New England is set on fire. Lord, that New England is awake. God, we declare the public high schools, the middle schools, the elementary schools will be set on fire. Revival would break out. Pour out your spirit, God, on every campus, every college campus. We call in Berkeley. We call in Harvard. We call in Cambridge, God. All the way down, even the East Coast, the Mid-Atlantic, into the South, all over the East Coast. Send revival, fire, awaken the East Coast, awaken America. You said, God, if we turn and look to you, you would forgive our sin and you would heal our land. Come, Lord, and heal our land in Jesus' name. Come away from my sleep. Lord, through the cowards of my soul, pour in me to overflow. My name is Robert Crumber. I am the pastor of Mercy House in Amherst, Mass. This is my friend and fellow pastor, Greg Moselle. He's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Amherst, Mass. We're right up the road, and uh, we minister to students and others who are part of the collegiate communities that make up the Pioneer Valley. And we're here to pray that this place, New England, would be a place that sends people out. Amen. The church has been a place to send people out since day one. Jesus looks in the eyes of those uh, fishermen and uh, just that small group and says, I want you to make disciples of all nations. And they'd never been more than 100 miles away from their home. And that is indeed what has happened. Disciples have been made in all nations, and God is a sending God. And so what we want to do is we want to pray that just as many were sent from from this campus through Dale Moody's uh, ministry, that that would happen again, not just in this campus, but in these colleges and universities all around New England, and that students would be sent out and others would be sent out all around the world. So Greg's going to lead us in a prayer for that. I think one of the great privileges of serving in this community, this Pioneer Valley, that this is our home. How many of you, this is home, the, the valley here, the Pioneer Valley? This is the place we love, this is the place God has planted us, the place that we call home. I have the privilege of serving in a church that has people from 43 different nations. And I know many of you all around New England God is bringing people from so many different nations and breaking down barriers. What a mission strategy God is doing. We live in Pentecost towns. We live in Pentecost, New England. 
So let's quiet ourselves. We've had a lot of passion, energy, emotion, which we should. We're emotively moved by what Christ has done to purchase our salvation, to redeem our lives. But, but let's quiet ourselves. God, we're your kids before you. You're the lover of our souls. You're Abba Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you've redeemed us on the cross. The greatest purchase in human history is the purchase of our souls on the cross. Thank you, Spirit, you've been deposited within us to guide us in the light of Christ, to mentor us, to apprentice us, to teach us. So as your church, we come before you. And God, we can so easily be discouraged in this land that has been a spiritual wilderness for far too long. But God, we give you thanks that like in the Chronicles of Narnia, we hear the ice breaking, Aslan's on the move, Jesus, you're on the move. So God, would you do what we confess to you we could never do? In the quietness, the stillness, and the humility, would you be tilling the soil of people's hearts, their minds, their souls? And oh God, by your spirit, would you bring forth radical transformation in the hearts and the lives of lost, broken, hurting people? And God, would you raise up in this place, like days of old, but in new ways we never could have imagined, would you make this like a launching pad to send out your workers into your harvest field around the world? And we will give to you all praise and glory and honor. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. My name is Grant Berry. I'm the uh, founder of Messiah's House and Reconnecting Ministries. And I've been given a commission by the Holy Spirit to help Jew and Gentile reconnect in the Spirit during these days. Come on. At our Messiah's House event, uh, this Rosh Hashanah, we combined with Greg Healy from 10 Day in Connecticut. And the Lord led us as we sought him to establish a prophetic meeting from beginning to end, to blow a spiritual shofar into the year 5777. This, as we blew the shofar, it was the end of the Jubilee year, but it is the beginning of the next Jubilee. Come on. And into that Jubilee, the Holy Spirit had us blow the shofar into three specific areas. The first was the restoration of the one new man. I'm Greg, and I'm very Gentile. This is my friend Grant, he's Jewish. This key which we spoke about earlier or I prayed into earlier, we've taken around Connecticut during the 10 days. And this key has a star of David in its handle. Come on. And this key is called the reconnection key between Jew and Gentile making one new man as we've heard many times today. And so we prayed a prayer over each other of identificational repentance, where I played the Gentile and Grant played the Jew. And we forgave one another, and we asked the Lord to cleanse our generational bloodlines. And we came together and blessed each other for this connection to solidify in friendship, in uh, just not just us, but also us as nations coming together, Gentile nations coming together with the Jewish nation. And if you have any doubt or wonder, what did D.L. Moody think about Israel and the Jewish people coming together, look up and see. There are four vents or portals, and they each have the same Star of David that's here on this key. 
the key of David, which is rest and rest on the Lord's shoulders. And Lord, we just give you thanks for that. This key represents the reconnection in the family of God. The Israel peace is the final act of restoration for the church to again refine its identity in Israel. For the family of God to reconnect to its roots. For the Jew and the Gentile, for the church and the remnant of Israel to become one that we would begin to push and take on the labor pains of intercession to bring Israel forth in the spirit that the family of God would be complete, that the Lord said he would show himself to the nations as holy through Israel's awakening. We proclaim the restoration of the one new man. We proclaim the fullness of the fivefold government of his church which is intricately connected and we proclaimed the preparation of the bride of Messiah to prepare the bride for the Lord's return. Alleluia. We've invited people up to pray with us over this reconnection key. Would you come up now to pray with us and let's form what we call in Judaism a minion of 10. And I, we want you to extend your hands as we pray over this key prophetically because God has designed that although it is Israel's awakening is the golden key, He has designed that His family from the nations are the one to take that key and blow the mercy of God upon it that they would come forth. This is his design to restore his family that we would be one in Yeshua. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we pray for the reconnection in your family, Father, to take place spiritually amongst us, to tear down the barriers that stand between Jew and Gentile in the church and the Messianic bodies, for the church to recognize and embrace the remnant of Israel, the Jewish believers that have reemerged, the Messianic body that has come forth. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for the body of Messiah to reunite in the one new man. For the church and the messianic bodies to move into their end time roles, Lord. We declare it, Lord, for prayer and supplication and evangelism, Father. And we pray for Israel's spiritual awakening and for the last great harvest of souls which are intricately linked together to come forth in a final push for the kingdom of God. And Lord, we speak to this key in the name of Yeshua as one man, as Jew and Gentile in the body of Messiah, in Israel and the church. And we say, Israel, come forth. Israel, come forth. Israel, come forth. Jesus. Lord, we just say too, as Gentiles, that we bless the nation of Israel. We bless the Jewish people. Forgive us, Father, where we have thought that just our Gentile traditions are Christianity only. Lord, let us see that our origins were Jewish once again. Lift the veil from us. Take out the earplugs so we can hear and understand and see you. And we may bless Israel once more. Yeah. That we are not separate, Lord, but you are bringing us together once again as one. Yes. We believe this in Jesus' name as New England. Thank you, Lord.
We want to help you to uh, finish this time of prayer. Um, I'm Len Cowan from the Abbey of the Way House of Prayer and the Kingdom Network of beautiful Worcester, Massachusetts. And I'm Hazen Stevens from the International House of Prayer in Atlanta, Georgia. So north and south coming together, east and west. We want to call your attention to a little verse from a wedding service that you probably heard. It's from Ephesians 5 where it's said that Christ loved the church gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. So I want to pray for the preparation of the church for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for that day when there will be rejoicing and gladness for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready by the righteous acts of God's people. So I want to pray for the preparation of the church, and one thing that I think God is going to use for the preparation of the church is persecution. He's using it all over the world. And we here in the West tend to complain. We tend to criticize, and we tend to fight back. And as Pastor Miranda said, this is a time for us to bless. It's a time for us to read 1 Peter to learn how to operate as God's people, to bless when we're cursed, so that those who accuse us will be ashamed when they see our righteous and good deeds. So join together now and pray. Let's pray for ourselves that we may be prepared as the beautiful and spotless bride of Christ that we're intended to be. Amen. So I'm going to lead in prayer. I want to just invite us to close strong in our last few moments of intercession together. Let's find someone across the aisle and let's just link hands together as one body all across this room, just as an expression of our unity. As one bride, we're going to present ourselves to Jesus right now. Revelation 22:17. 17. The spirit and the bride say, come, let him who hears say, come. Let him who is thirsty come, whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Commentators will tell you that that's a twofold come. It's a come to the world that they might come and partake of the waters that only Jesus can give. And it's a come, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, your church is crying out for you to come. So we say to the world right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask God that they would come to the living waters, yes, that they Lord. would come to the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. We come ask on. for an inbreaking of your power and your presence, God, in New England, from the north to the south, to the east, to the west, that a mighty wave of God's presence, a mighty wave of God's glory would visit our nation again and we call upon the king of glory lift up your heads oh you gates lift up your heads ye everlasting doors that the king of glory may come in who is this king of glory the lord mighty in battle oh we say king of glory we long for you to return to this nation and we say maranatha in unison with the spirit of god your bride you and us and we and you God, we ask, release the groans of intercession. Yes, we don't know how we ought to pray, Father. We pray, let the Spirit grow through, and, uh, through, grow through us. Let the Spirit make intercession through us in this moment and in the days and weeks to come. Oh, that you would birth revival in us again, as you did through Edwards and Brainerd and Finney. Oh, God, that you give us a groan birth in the Spirit. Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, your bride cries, come. Make us pure and spotless. Make us holy and blameless by your blood. Oh God, make us equally yoked and prepared for your coming. So we say, God, give us the grace that we might hasten the day of your coming through our lifestyles of holiness and sobriety. Oh, that we would be in the world, but not of the world, that you would keep us from the evil one, and that we would be burning and shining lamps, that we would stand as servants girded, our lamps burning bright, filled with oil, ready for the bridegroom to come. So God, we pray. We pray, God, in this hour, let us gather oil. 
Let us gather oil for the day of your coming, Lord, that our lamps wouldn't go out. Just take, even in this moment right now, just take a moment to settle into the unity that is present by the Spirit in this room. Settle into that agreement for a moment and speak to Jesus as his bride. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we're here for you. Jesus, we love you. And we pray in this final moment of intercession in this prayer meeting. We pray that you would visit America again, God. That you would have mercy on us for our sins. Lord, for the racial division. For the injustice in our nation. For abortion, God. For the innocent shedding of blood, Lord, throughout the the generations in this nation, Father, from the Native Americans to the present genocide of those in the womb. God, we ask, Father, for mercy, and we plead to better blood right now. We plead the only blood that can make us white and clean before the throne of Almighty God. So we ask you, Lord, forgive us for our sins. Put and send revival again to our nation. In Jesus' name we pray.